Welcome to the Electric Scooter Buying Guide 2019. I'm Amit. And I'm Rafi. And Rafi, we've been getting a lot of queries lately, you know, uh, on our channel uh, with right. regards to which scooter they can buy, which electric scooter they can buy, and which scooter offers, uh, you know, the longest range right. to the high speed scooters, which are the least expensive, and, uh, you know, brands which are tech savvy. So, in this video, we will be covering high speed electric scooters that you can buy now. And also, we'll be covering future launches to come from different electric companies. That's right, Amit. Uh, this is going to be high speed. We will also be doing low speed later on. Yes. And in our videos, Amit, we have decided to go solely for lithium ion batteries. Yep. Because uh, lead acid is old now. And we yeah, feel it's high time we moved on to a better technology. True. Uh, having said that, uh, we'll be having a detailed data sheets that Plugin India has created. And over the years, uh, Kamlesh, Atulji and myself, we have been following the electric vehicle scooter industry quite closely. So we'll be giving you our opinions, our views, and we'll be having a score that you oh. can actually uh, judge whether the scooter where it's uh, standing That's as compared nice. to the rest. That's nice. So you guys are going to get a whole lot of data for you. At the end, we will show you various graphs, leaderboards and tables and other cool stuff. So you stay tuned. And we also want this to be a regular series. So every quarter, we'll be covering electric scooter buying guide for you. And where definitely we will not be making choices for you because everybody's needs and priorities are different. So we can only tell you options available for you. So without wasting any more time, let's start in the alphabetical order, order. Rafi. So Rafi, let's begin with the first electric scooter, which is the Ampere Greaves Zeal. And here is a data sheet for Ampere Zeal. Yes. That the battery is made by Ampere, which is a good thing. We mailed them about BMS features that, but we got no reply. And the dealers have no idea also. Well, we got information that the Zeal model is doing very well among the dealers. Response has been good. The dealer has also told us that Greaves is very serious about electric scooters, electric vehicles in general, and more performance scooters are on in the pipeline. Let's uh, see the opinions of the Plug in India team about the Ampere Greaves Zeal. So the Ampere Zeal is a pleasure to ride with a 60 volt system offering instant pickup. The design and colors are fantastic. I have a lot of respect for the Ampere brand who have been selling EVs since the noughties and in small towns and they make a lot of components in-house too. But now the Greaves Cotton who are makers of the petrol diesel engines have 81% stake in Ampere. I don't know what their agenda is. And that for me is a concern if I decide to buy the Zeal. The range and top speed are a bit low for the price I'm paying. Battery even though made in India will have a shorter life. It has a smooth ride and a very good pickup, good suspension, it's well tested and FAME 2 compliant. The company has an impressive pedigree of 10 plus years in the uh, market and more than 70 plus dealers pan India. The possibility of after sale service are very good as the batteries are made in house. So the second electric scooter that we're covering today is Aether 450. Here is the data sheet for it. Aether also said that they use a high nickel NMC battery where the percentage of nickel is way higher than cobalt or manganese. This improves the energy density of the cells. The battery is made by Aether themselves. The Aether is a truly connected scooter uh, with all software updates and monitoring available to you without uh, even going to the uh, you know Aether service center. center yeah. You know they are very well connected, and we think that they are the best in the connectivity features in any scooters. Uh, Amit, the most awesome part about the scooter is that the is the BMS features that they've provided. Right. Basically, they've used software and hardware engineering to protect the battery in every which way. Right. And they have gone way above and beyond uh, what most other people have done to provide mm -hmm. a fantastic user experience as well. well. Now, that's really electrifying. Now, BMS, uh, uh, as we were talking about, is called battery management system. Correct. And why is this required in a scooter like the Aether? Because basically in any electric scooter, mm -hmm. uh, the battery is a major component. There are a lot of things yeah. that can go wrong in this. Correct. Uh, the temperature could be too high. There could be undercurrent. There could be overcurrent uh, because of excessive draw on it. And these things need to be monitored. Right. Now, most scooters, they do this hmm. in a very rudimentary fashion. Some of them are more advanced. Right. But Aethers is the most advanced that we've seen yet. Okay. Now, the company can real-time monitor what is happening in the scooter. Uh, the driver's uh, driving profile can be tracked. And oh. accordingly, the BMS can take care of the battery. 
Oh, nice. So uh, these are things that we have found are truly electrifying. Nice. Amit, let's listen to the Plugin India team's opinions about the Aether S450. These are the features in an EV that I care about. The connected scooter. Check. Remote monitoring. Check. Software updates. Check. Amazing BMS features. Check. Great people who respond to all our queries. Check. So Aether ticks all the boxes for me. For me, also, the annual fee for connectivity and service is not an issue. Uh, I can understand why some people might not like it. Uh, my only issue is the slow crawling pace of expansion. I expect the Aether 2 to be made available in 10 cities in India by the end of 2019 and clearly that's not happening. They don't want to seem to leave their home base of Bengaluru for some reason. The lack of pan-India availability has a half-point penalty in my book. The price is a bit too high and so not for everyone but based on what we get it's worth the high sticker price. It has a mid-drive motor which results in a remarkable improvement in performance over its hub motor counterparts. Very good suspension and ride quality provides that zippy feel. Company has paid attention to all aspects of EV usage and even provided charging points all over the cities where they sell the scooters. So those customers have absolutely no hassles. Moving to the third electric scooter of the show, Ivan Zero Plus and Ivan Trendy. Here is the data sheet for it. Both these models have similar battery sizes, range and top speed. Essentially, they are the same power train but with different designs. Just looking bit different. Yeah. Amit, let's find out what the Plugin India team has to say about the A1 Zero Plus and the A1 Trendy. We have observed few negative issues with the company. Multiple senior management people who are with the company in 2018 have quit. Uh, we know few customers who are not happy with the service and support. I would not recommend their products and would wait and watch on where this company is going and if they respond to customer service calls. I am only giving a 2 rating as the scooters look nice and they ride well. This scooter has a good ride, it has a good suspension and it has good pickup. It has all the standard features that one would expect in an EV and it looks good. Customers, however, are not getting good service from the company and we are not sure if the brand will survive. The removable battery is a good idea, it has a good pricing and it's also available in 10 states. Here is the fourth electric scooter for the show, uh, the Avera Retrosa. Here is the data sheet for it and uh, an interesting startup based out of Amravati in Andhra Pradesh, uh, but they only sell this bike online in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. It's very interesting to see that they have an outstanding top speed of 90 km per hour Amit and wow. that makes them the highest, the fastest electric scooter yes, in the Indian is. market. Yeah. Uh, they also have some very interesting battery ba battery features, uh, BMS features right. and uh, they have a LFP based battery chemistry. Nice. Amit, let's find out from the Plug in India team what the Avera Retrosa is all about. The company seems super tech focused. They seem to have bypassed dealers like Aether and Revolt. Uh, the Retrosa has a real retro look, connectivity, good BMS features which has piqued my interest. However, I cannot give a rating as we have not tried the scooter and this is a company to watch out for. We have not yet driven this scooter so we can't give it a complete overall score but it looks like some old scooter models. Uh, you can tell us in the comments below which ones you think they are, hence the retro SA name. I suppose modern technology with old style and looks. Very good top speed, almost double of most others, promises a very good range as well. And it has a lot of features including connectivity. The fifth electric scooter in the show today is Gemopi Astro Glide TDR 360Z and they have been in the market for a long time and here is the data sheet for it. In one of the episodes of the Plugin India show, we actually spoke about the Gemopi huge pedigree which has sold more than 15 million two-wheelers across the world and this model is the first high-speed model launched by them and uh, do note that this is not a fame to compliant uh, bike. True Amit and they also told us that they have more than 55 dealers all around India. Yes. Uh, as of November 2019, their website does not list these dealers. Okay. And they should because that really helps build uh, brand value and credibility. Yes. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the Plugin India team's opinions, what they have to say about the Gemopi Astrid Lite TDR 360Z. We have not had opportunity to test the scooter, hence I won't give a rating. I am impressed by Gemopi's pedigree, but the company is to build that pedigree in India. Let's hope I also give them a rating the next quarter when we do this video. We have not yet driven this scooter, so we can't give it a complete score. The Chinese partner has 20 plus years of experience, which is a very good thing. It has a good pan-India dealer network. It has a decent range and a decent top speed, 
which is a little better than the rest of the scooters in India. The other specs also look very good like motor power and uh, extra battery pack to increase the range. So it sounds good. 60% of the scooter is made in India and the high voltage 72 volts compared to other scooters means that the wiring is more efficient and it leads to a design which can carry more power. The sixth electric scooter is the Hero Electric Photon LP and here is the data sheet for it. For 10 plus years, they were happy to sell low speed lead acid battery based uh, Hero Photon once the government laid down the fame to rules of making battery packs in India and also enforced a higher top speed, Hero finally acted and this resulted in a 2019 Hero Photon LP uh, which is a higher speed and uh, but one important thing is that you cannot remove the battery uh, but you know one of the dealers in Pune actually did so so you can ask your dealer and if he can do it for you it will be perfect they'll retrofit it for you so Amit uh, we feel that Hero seems to be holding back uh, the Hero Electric Photon LP is the company's flagship product right. and uh, although the product is great hmm. but we feel that it's being held back by the company. Uh, they should be competing with the best uh, electric scooters in the market in terms of uh, battery technology, in terms of BMS features, right. in terms of connectivity, yep. uh, top speed, range and uh, it just seems to us that uh, the top management of the company does not see, have an EV vision. True. Uh, anyway, let's just go ahead and see what the Plug in India team has to say about the particular scooter, Hero Electric Photon LP. I love the design of the Hero Photon. It just uh, looks classic and retro. Uh, and they haven't changed the design since 2015, since we first saw it. Uh, I like the fact that the 2019 Hero Photon uses lithium ion phosphate batteries made by Trontech. Again, the company does not provide detailed information on the battery and the BMS that I would expect. So buying a photon would mean that you have no idea if something goes wrong with the battery and we just pray and hope that the dealer can diagnose and fix battery issues. Uh, 70 km range is manageable for my limited city rides, although that can be a limiting factor for people who want to travel further. This scooter is available across India and has more than 10 years of experience in the market. The range is a bit lower and the top speed is average. The ride quality is great, the suspension is fantastic. Having been in the industry for so many years, we also expect Hero Electric to be making, making top quality battery packs in-house. The higher voltage, which is a 60 volt system compared to the other scooters, means that the wiring is more efficient and leads to a design which can carry more power. It has good after-sale support and does not cost that much. Overall, Hero is a dependable brand and Hero Electric also seems to be reliable. The seventh electric scooter for the show is the Hero Electric Optima HS. And here is the data sheet for it. So the Optima is definitely looking very stylish and has matte finishes and is aimed at people who love looks in their bikes. Amit, uh, this scooter comes with a very unique dual battery system. Wow. So if in case you want, uh, you can have one battery charging at home while you're uh, using the other, swap okay. it. Uh, you can also increase your range by putting both the batteries inside the scooter at the same time. Oh, nice. Uh, if you wish, you can have another extra charger and okay. charge both the batteries simultaneously using one charger each. So it will charge faster. Okay. So uh, this is a good interesting design by Hero Electric. Uh, not everyone may like it. Uh, however, let's just move on to the Plug India team's opinion yes. and see what they have to say about the Hero Electric uh, Optima HS. I like the fact that they are offering a decent range, uh, 190 to 100 kilometers. I also like the matte finish of the Optima. It looks really cool. What I don't like is that Hero Electric is forcing us to use two batteries. Really? Do I need to micromanage and charge two batteries now? Come on, Hero Electric, make it easier for the consumers. This is nuts. This looks like a regular ice scooter. And for those who want the economy of an e-bike but don't want to stand out in a crowd, this is a good pick. It has good styling, finish, and the quality of accessories is top-notch. Hero Electric has been in the business for 10 plus years and its dealer network is nationwide. So you can expect good support and after-sales service. The price though tends to be on the higher side when compared with the other internal combustion engine counterparts but the running costs are so ridiculously low that the benefits completely overshadow the high upfront cost. It's got two batteries which make it a long range bike while giving it the option to be a cheap low range bike as well. The 8th electric scooter for the show is the Hero Electric NYX HS and here is the data sheet for it. Uh, we really love this scooter. This is purely made as a cargo loader that can carry up to 150 kilos. Uh, this has proved to be an excellent product for businesses. True. Uh, again, Hero has the same setup on Amit like the earlier one. It's got two batteries. Oh, nice. And uh, let's listen to the Plug India team's opinion about what they have to say about the Hero Electric NYX HS. HS. 
I love the utilitarian feel of this scooter. Um, this has a potential to help many businesses. I really like it. Welcome, well done, Hero Electric. But the problem is again they have we have a two battery nightmare. This is a super design for carrying loads and even regular riding with a backrest. Nice metal handles on three sides of the back seat to tie various goods using bungee cords. Hero has a good dealer network in Pan India, so warranty and after sales should not be a problem. It's a cute design. good quality accessories nice build quality the top speed and range again are on the lower side but should be good for deliveries and local usage the ninth electric scooter is the nds leo plus uh, and here is the data sheet for it do understand that the leo plus uh, is not a fame to compliance scooter nds are launching a fame to compliance scooter in a few in a very uh, very okay. soon and uh, we spoke to some of the owners of nds leo plus and also a few dealers and they have achieved about 160 to 170 kilometers per charge uh, with normal riding the company claims but it can go up to 225 kilometers per charge that's a lot but we always you know we ask the dealers and the users uh, to get their feeders exactly amit also the nds leo also has a dual battery system uh, just like the previous two scooters Uh, the difference here is that one battery is fixed into the scooter and only one is removable oh nice uh, the batteries are manufactured by a very good indian company called trontech uh, let's go on now to take a look at what the plug in india team has to say about the nds leo plus nds have always had rugged scooters and like the sturdy feel of the leo plus the nds leo plus scooter offers the highest range among any scooters we have we see here plus marks for offering a high range option in the market Uh, the brand is not available pan india that is an issue uh, and this model is also not not fame to compliant yet so we are waiting for something that nds will launch which is fame to compliant i like the motorcycle like handlebar and comfortable riding stance it has a very good range and better than average top speed the upfront price is a bit high though the higher voltage 72 volt system compared to the other scooters of 48 volts means that the wiring is much more efficient and leads to a design which can carry more power The tenth electric scooter for the show is the Okinawa I Praise, and here is the data sheet for it. The I Praise was launched with a lot of issues with the Exicom branded battery. Uh, the battery was shaking all over, and while you're riding on bumpy roads, which is always there in India, so and the battery was not stable, and people hated it. The software was also not working properly, and the I Praise owners was. Uh, the bikes were stalling due to faulty software either in the bms or the controller since then the company has fixed few of the issues and also the battery is now not jumping up Any and down so amit now the they have a new supplier for the batteries which is a company called trontech yeah. and uh, it seems these batteries are doing quite well we have news from many of the customers that these batteries are giving them a 150 plus kilometer range wow. uh, okinawa has been very quick to fix these bugs good job okinawa That's a good job done. Let's move on now and find out what the Plug in India team has to say about the Okinawa I Praise. Okinawa seems to have fixed the issues and moved in the right direction with the I Praise, but I cannot recommend this product yet. I will need to wait for a quarter or more to gauge the performance of the I Praise with the new battery pack. I only then can recommend it. Having said that, I like the fact that Okinawa is trying to offer basic connectivity with the I Praise. Also, the connectivity features are primitive compared to the Ether, and I also like the fact that Okinawa has quickly fixed issues, and now customers are actually liking the I Praise with the new uh, Trontech battery. Good top speed and range, though less than promised, but still higher than what others deliver. The company has presence Pan India, so one can expect good support on most issues. However, be warned, we know many owners who are having problems getting good service. The ride quality is good and the suspension is also good. Though the upfront cost is high, it enjoys the super low running and maintenance cost that are intrinsic to all EVs. The higher voltage 72 volt system compared to the 48 volt of other scooters means that the wiring is more efficient and this leads to a design which can carry more power. Okay. Moving on to the 11th electric scooter for the show which is the Okinawa Ridge Plus and here is the data sheet for it. The Okinawa Ridge Plus with, was launched with a Trontech battery and have got good reviews from owners. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, since the start, the battery seems to be reliable and did not give any issues like we heard about the I Praise. You know, and but the, it's very pricey because it's about eighty-five thousand uh, uh, rupees, rupees <laughs> and uh, for a very nominal of sixty kilometer, kilometer range. Yeah. 
uh, well, let's go on and uh, look at what the Plugger India team has to say about the Okinawa Ridge Plus. I like the scooter. The battery pack has seen no major issues since the start, according to many customers we spoke to. I also like the fact that Okinawa is trying to offer basic connectivity with the Ridge, just like uh, the iPraise, uh, the features of are very primitive compared to say the Ether. Uh, I would recommend this, but I would also compare this with the Praise Pro, which seems to offer more for similar pricing. Okinawa seems to have inflated the pricing of Ridge Plus because of so-called connectivity features. So before buying also, uh, do speak to your dealer. They have to be knowledgeable of the product, product battery pack and uh, be enthusiastic about electric scooters. We have seen many dealers investing in dealerships as a business and have no clue on the service or EVs. Avoid such dealers. Good riding stands and overall fit, finish and design. The performance is average and the range is on the lower side. The company has a pan-India presence but we've heard many owners having problems and being disowned by the company. So beware. It costs much more than a regular ice scooter but again like all EVs it enjoys ridiculously low running and maintenance costs. The higher voltage 60 volt system compared to the other scooters means that the wiring is more efficient and leads to a design which can carry more power. The twelfth electric scooter is the Okinawa Praise Pro and here is the data sheet for it. Okinawa launched this Praise Pro with a lead acid version and finally moved to a lithium ion uh, version of the, uh, the, uh, the Praise Scooter. Praise and we spoke to the users and they said that the range is up to 75 kilometers but in the real world it could maybe give you a range of about 80. 80k. Which is good Amit. And also, uh, one thing to note is that this scooter does not have any connectivity features. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go over to the Plugin India team and see what they have to say about it. The Okinawa Praise Pro. So immediately I see the Praise Pro offering a real world 80 km range which is much more than the Ridge Plus. It also offers an impressive top speed of 75 kmph. I would rather get the Praise Pro than the Ridge Plus which offers only 60 km range at the same price and some primitive connectivity features. Um, again, the same thing what I said about the dealer, um, do check if they're knowledgeable about the product, about the battery pack uh, and also if they're enthusiastic about electric scooters. It looks good, has a convenient design, much better top speed and average range. It costs much more than a regular ice scooter but again like all EVs it enjoys ridiculously low running and maintenance costs. It has a removable battery and the higher voltage 72 volt system compared to the other scooters means that the wiring is more efficient and it leads to a design which can carry more power. The 13th electric scooter for the show is the Pure EV ePluto 7G and here is the data sheet for it. This scooter will be launched in December 2019 and there is a Pure EV ePluto currently available which is a low speed scooter and is not a FAME 2 compliant model. Right. The 7G, uh, the ePluto 7G in fact is. And the most impressive aspect of this, uh, of the company is that they are very manic and crazy about, you know, battery management system and engineering. They are making batteries in the Hyderabad factory and also adding software features to the BMS, uh, making Pure EV a very unique and among uh, electric scooters the best. Well, Amit, I would prefer that the 7G model have all the features that they can pack into that battery pack and the BMS like SOC percentage estimation, state of health estimation, right. uh, cell voltage monitoring uh, and a lot more. And hopefully the team can add all of these by early 2020. Uh, we have also learned that the advanced BMS features that are there that we were shown when we went to the company are not going to be available retroactively to existing customers. That's oh. an hardware upgrade. Okay. So that can't be so upgraded over software and that kind of sucks. But however, the ePluto 7G is a really promising scooter and I think for that they deserve a round of applause and electrifying applause. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what the Plugin India team has to say about the Pure EV ePluto 7G. I loved riding the ePluto. It was peppy and very comfortable. We hope to get the ePluto 7G sometime soon. For me, the clincher is the fact that the company is focused on battery engineering and they have an in-house BMS team. I would not hesitate in opting for the 7G as I can be confident on the battery and also Pure EV team was very open and helpful. For me, all the upcoming BMS features to be added are important. So, will I wait till next February March and then buy the 7G? That is a question I'll need to answer. The battery is made by the same company which means better performance and servicing of issues related to them. It has an advanced BMS a good range and top speed. The high voltage 60 volt system compared to other scooters means that the wiring is more efficient and leads to a design which can carry more power. 
it has good looks and a retro vespa kind of styling company is young but has quickly developed 30 dealerships across the country and one can expect good after sales service and support from them too as they are heavily into improving their design via research and development Moving to the last and the 14th electric uh, scooter of the show, this is the Teco Electra Emerge. Let's have a look at the data sheet. The Teco Electra Emerge scooter is available in 70 plus dealers, Pan India, which is amazing to hear because it's a, it's a startup. Yes, Amit. And let's go ahead and see what the Plugin India team has to say about the Teco Electra Emerge. Okay, the Emerge is the prettiest scooter among the entire lot. I love the design, it's got a retro modern design elements and a lot of quality of life features like the large boot space, USB ports, etc. The imported battery is air approved and customers we spoke to are happy with the range. Uh, before I would think of getting the Emerge scooter, the company needs to show me a strong technology vision and needs to have a plan to localize components in India. I expect more technical data on the battery in the BMS, so I would wait for another iteration before considering the Emerge. Again a retro look with modern technology inside it. A gasometer like all the others but it rides well and performs quite well good suspension and ride quality. The company has more than 70 dealers pan India in just two years, so it promises good support and after sales service. The range and top speed are average, among the lower price scooters available in the market. So Rafi, that was a great roundup on 14 electric scooters that we had on our show this time. And we showed you the pros and cons and a whole lot of lot of information so about them. The numbers. Yeah, yeah, numbers and the graphs will be coming up soon now. Uh, you can watch them all based on different parameters. Uh, the links will also be there below so you can watch them at your own leisure later. In the next episode, we will be covering low speed electric scooters buying guide and also many more scooters that would have been launched in the next quarter. And please let us know how you felt in this show. Any opinions are most valuable. Please put it down in the comments below. What will you buy further or what will you not buy and what you want us to add more in as features of this show. And what's stopping you from buying electric scooters because there are so, so many, many options available. <laughs> go green, go EV.